What's up guys, I'm Nathan and in this video we're finally back again for another overall anime dimensions tier list and this is gonna be for the epic anniversary update that we just got yesterday and this, uh, well there's only one new character technically speaking that's gonna be this guy, that's gonna be Karakuri Summer uh, which is actually not a reskin, I was wrong in my last video uh, but we also have quite a lot of awakenings uh, and that basically have buffed old characters so my guess about Luffy getting a buff was in fact correct. Uh, so you guys know the drill S tier is gonna be for those meta units and the characters that are actually usable and that you see people use. A tier is gonna be for the very good characters that just probably aren't the best but still are very very good and definitely very usable. B tier is gonna be for average, mostly reserved for those gem characters, the reasonably decent ones of the gem characters. C tier is gonna be for the somewhat worst gem characters, and D tier is just gonna be for everything that's just garbage. So we're gonna be starting off, uh, so I'm actually uh, using these, uh, what do you say, uh, the awakening ones. You can see based on the background, as you can see for like the type Nika awakening Luffy, he's got this yellow background versus just the regular one. I'm keeping them separate because the awakenings are actually very expensive and it's definitely a long grind so I would definitely not count them as the same character. Uh, so starting off with Awakened Luffy, most definitely S tier and he's gonna be significantly higher than before because his, uh, his awakening ability, you already know his first move Kaminari is just, it's got a 25% chance of resetting itself which is pretty nice and it does a little bit low damage but it's still okay because it's got a really quick cooldown. Second move Gigant does a bit of damage and uh, it's got a 12 second cooldown and you basically have iframes for some time. Third move gives you extended M1 range and more M1 damage, does a bit of damage. Uh, ultimate uh, has got pretty huge AoE but it's just got a bit of a wind up. But uh, this uh, new awakening, what it's basically gonna do is, first of all, you're gonna do a crap ton of burst damage. Like uh, with my current stats, you're gonna be doing around uh, one and a half to two times the damage of the average ultimate. And you're gonna be getting, I think, 25% extra attack and also speed boost for 30 seconds. And that's quite a lot. So, and the cooldown is 125 seconds, which might seem like a lot. But if you have the average, like on average, if you're max level, I would say, you would have like 20% cooldown reduction. If that's the case, 96 seconds uh, would be how much time that you have to wait. And on top of that 96 seconds, 30 seconds are you actually using your ability. So uh, 30 seconds you'll be using your ability and you just have to wait for a minute. So it's a one is to two ratio. And overall that last move actually makes a pretty significant difference making him actually quite a good character because even before his moveset was decent it's just that his damage is a little bit lacking um, his speed is still a little bit uh, his speed is no longer too much of an issue because the ultimate will give you speed for 30 seconds so yeah overall really really good priestess was already the um, best healer and now she just got even better she heals better because her uh, her, fourth, uh, her awakening is basically going to heal you by uh, uh, heal you and your teammates by 3% every second for like I think 15-20 seconds or so uh, and on top of that you will be dealing tick damage and that tick damage is not even that bad so Priestess is actually now even a reasonably good damage dealer um, so yeah pr uh, pr uh, gonna be like mid 8 tier now um, Aaron he's now uh, obtainable he's gonna be an S tier of course, Eren is definitely gonna have to be higher than Luffy. Even without the glitch, Eren is just really good. Um, it, because his third ability, which doesn't have a very long cooldown, allows you to spam both 1 and 2. And you can actually move around. I mean, of course, 1 and 2 don't have iframes, but like I said, you can move around. You're only restricted from dashing, that's all. But still very good, though the glitch with Eren and Yorichi has been patched, unfortunately. Um, then we have Infinity Gojo. The shadow version, I mean, shadow versions aren't even worth it anymore. Like, for now, because all limited characters are obtainable. So, shadow uh, shadow is just not useful. Heck, I'm actually gonna create a, se a separate tier because shadows aren't gonna be useful for the next three weeks. Yeah, that, that seems more fit. So, we have a new tier now, shadow versions, not shadow monarch because he's not a version, he's a new, he's a separate unit. But shadow versions are useless because 
every single limited time character is obtainable for the next three weeks so grind the game boys um anyway the next is gonna be summer katakuri and he is a pay to win character kind of well it's not really paid to win because he's not that overpowered he is good don't get me wrong his moveset is good but his damage is a little bit on the lower side um and i'll tell you about his moves basically you can obtain him from getting the premium battle pass and getting all the way to rank 30 if you will like pay for the entire thing it's gonna cost you 4000 robux which is definitely not worth it and uh, honestly unless you're a collector even paying uh, 800 robux and then grinding well, if this is your soul goal, I mean, 800 Robux is kind of worth it because you will be getting a lot of extra awakening gems. Because without those extra awakening gems, you can only awaken one character. Uh, that I suggest should be Luffy because he is permanent now, so everyone should be able to get him. Priestess is good, but unless you have the premium one, you won't be able to awaken her. Um, so, I mean, yeah, the premium thing is worth it, but uh, paying just for this guy is probably not that worth it. Uh, his first move, I mean, it's got a very fast cooldown, um, but it's got a kind of small AoE, if I may say, um, and it also doesn't do the best damage. The second move is actually quite good. It's got a good AoE and pulls everyone to the center of his whirlpool, um, and you can also move around. You don't get locked in place or anything, so that's a pretty nice move. The third move um, kind of goes forward, and you can control the shark sort of thing and deal quite a good amount of damage but it's got a long cooldown of 24 seconds and that's the issue and the ultimate is kind of like um, his third skill of the regular version or like asana's ultimate as well which has uh, which does kind of maybe average a bit below average damage but it's got a reasonable cooldown and you can move around overall it's a good move set um, and it's pretty good for time challenges i would say but it's just because of his damage, I'm gonna have to put him in A tier rather than S tier. Plus the fact that you have to spend Robux to get him. And it's absolutely not possible to get him without that. Shadow Yorichi is gonna chill in this. He's gonna be above uh, Gojo because... I mean, no, he's not gonna be above Gojo because the glitch is gone. So I have to pay respects for this guy. Um, Nezuko is probably gonna be like... Honestly... Yeah, okay, you know, Nezuko I'll put higher than Luffy. But honestly, somewhat equal, if I may say. Uh, Nezuko does depend a little bit on Kurumi, but not nearly as much as Milum does. Uh, she is just a gem character, but uh, it's sad that they didn't bring back the old gem characters. She's actually really, really, really good against bosses, because even without her ultimate resetting all the cooldowns, she's still really good. And with that, she does just mad amounts of damage. Uh, so yeah, I'll keep her like kind of tied like they both are really really good So it's hard to decide which is better because Nezuko has a fixed purpose But uh, this this thing most people haven't got him yet So it's like hard to tell what he could be useful for but overall he's still a pretty good all-rounder um, From what I can say um, Astolfo is gonna go ahead and be in A tier uh, Of course like since it's a damage dealer I'm gonna give priority over support but still um, Astolfo is the best one of the best gem characters You don't even need to do an awakening one of the moves is a dash move, a movable ultimate, a move cheer which buffs you and your teammates so overall pretty good. The regular saver is going to be in C tier whereas the awakened one is going to be in B tier. The regular saver has trash AOEs and kind of mid mobility but uh, the, uh, the fifth move when you awaken her, now it's not worth awakening her because the thing is even if you pay you can literally only get two awakenings so you have to pick between this and this and priestess is a healer she has a use and most likely you're not going to be using this character because it's just the main like animation for when you're getting awakening that has a massive aoe and does a mad amount of damage for a gem character anyway about four million however the buff that you get isn't the best you just get extended m1 range which isn't a big deal and we've seen that a lot um, Luffy, the regular one, is definitely going to be in S tier, but definitely on the lower side of S tier. Um, Broly is going to go and be in S tier as well. He's a good assist against bosses because he's got huge AOE and does pretty good damage. Gilgamesh is also going to chill right there in S tier. Pretty solid assist um, uh, uh, for dimensions mainly. So I'm going to go and put him right there.
Next character we have is going to be Kokushibo, who is actually worse than Gilgamesh because Kokushibo is no longer a meta because he is in fact outclassed by Esper, even as a Dimensions main. So, RIP Kokushibo. Uh, so, that's why Gilgamesh is overall better because he is kind of meta for something. Um, Esdeath is going to be like right there in S tier as well. Um, she's got pretty good AoE. I mean, nothing much extra to say there. Uh, on as death actually i'll i'll move i'll move as death below luffy like uh, and even broly because broly is a meta as death isn't um karakuri the regular one is gonna also be an eight tier um totally different characters his ultimate just uh, allows you to spam his first three moves it's just that the ultimate doesn't do much damage and it has a very long cooldown which is why i'm not a big fan of this character um, the regular saber is gonna be a reasonable B tier. Honestly, I'd pick the regular saber over this one just because this one's so expensive and no amount of grinding will help you get all three of the awakenings, which is why I just don't prefer this because it doesn't have any particular use, even though that final ability is really broken. You're not fine, I'll be merciful, I'll put her there because this is just a performance based one, but yeah. Um, then we have Demon Lord Rumuru, who's going to be right there. Basically, uh, he has a lifesteal move and a lot of iframes. Not much to say about him. Um, then we have uh, Kirito, who's also going to be a solid, solid A tier. Probably one of the best like budget uh, characters that you could get if you just don't want to spend too much. Because I think he's just like 2400 raid tokens. And he's got a very good moveset and reasonable damage and decent mobility as well. Um, uh, Misaka is also gonna be right there. Um, honestly, I would say kind of tied with um, Saber. You know, she's better because Saber doesn't have mobility, whereas Misaka does. And Misaka also has faster cooldowns. Levi is gonna be right there. I mean, he's 3000 raid tokens. Honestly, not worth the price because Kirito is literally better overall. But I mean, if you get him as a drop, he's not bad because he has a pretty fun moveset. Um, Naruto is gonna go ahead and be right there, a solid S tier. Um, he's not really useful as a main, but a pretty, pretty good assist um, for all purposes. He does good damage and has huge AV and has a decently fast cooldown. Ryuko is gonna be like definitely up there in S tier, mainly because her assist is godly. She's a good main. And her assist is just insane because it has a 60 second cooldown, which is very fast for assist. Like 75 is already pretty considered quite fast and 90 is the average, but 60 seconds with still good damage is amazing. Um, Alice is going to be in A, a tier as well. I mean, she heals, but overall, um, not that, I mean, she gives a lot of iframes and heals, but the damage is just uh, garbage. Uh, then we have um, Melum who is gonna probably be like milim depends a lot on kurumi which is why i'm reluctant to put her very high i'll put her right above the regular luffy um but without kurumi she's honestly not that good then we have a shadow as diff who's going to be like uh, coming under the currently useless category um shadow as death is probably better than gojo so i'm gonna put him there uh speaking of which we have infinity gojo who's going to be right there also S tier, but most definitely not the best character that you could get, and there's a lot of better picks. But he is also a good assist, so that's that. You know what? I'll actually I'll actually put Gojo a bit higher than S tier. The the shadow versions definitely don't get Gojo no matter what. But for the regular thing, Gojo is actually maybe a bit better because his assist is actually quite good and it is usable. Um, as a main, he's okay. I mean, you're allowed to spam. But his damage is just really low. Um, Primordial is going to be top B, uh, top B tier, the best 1600 gem obtainable character. Because his third move will actually increase your attack and range. So uh, that makes your ultimate really, really good. Um, this dude is going to be in A tier as well. Honestly, I'll put... No, nah, no, nah, I'll put it like this itself. Which Megumin is going to be like... Um, pretty solid S tier because of her AoE. Unfortunately, she is, has not come back. Uh, Priestess, I mean, you already know what she does. Shadow Monarch is obviously the best character in the game because third move allows you to spam dash because the first move is a dash with iframes and third move allows you to do that without cooldowns. And the ultimate will give you 100% crit chance, which is awesome. 
Um, Esper and Luffy, it's a hard choice. Honestly, I'll say they are equal for now because Luffy with the Awakening actually does just about as much damage as Esper, if not a bit more. And Luffy also has huge AoE. However, Esper is a better all-rounder as of now because Esper has like a pretty, pretty huge like AoEs and stuff. And uh, Luffy is very good, but maybe he's also more expensive. But the thing is, they both do about the same damage, but as per so far is faster in Dimensions, but Luffy's Awakening hasn't really been tested out in Dimensions yet. His ultimate, like I said, does give you that speed boost. The only thing is, the second move will lock you in place, and even the Awakening that gives you so much damage, does lock you in place for a while, meaning I don't think you'd outclass as per in Dimensions. But um, in raids and boss rushes, um, Luffy is potentially better or at least equal to Esper. So I'm gonna say that overall they're equal. I'm not saying Esper is better. Uh, Rengoku is going to be right there in A tier because um, his assist is not bad. There's nothing much to say about that. Um, Bakugo is gonna just be in C tier. Uh, nah, I'll put him in like. No, no, I'll literally put him in C tier. He's not useful as a gem character, even because Lancer, even if you want like a very fast character, Lancer is a better one. Um, Yujiro is definitely gonna be a solid B tier. Um, he has mobility, which puts him above Saber. Uh, his first move is a good dash, third and fourth move have good area and the fourth move heals. Um, this is a good one but useless now because you can get him from the shop. Um, Gojo is gonna go ahead and be um, probably right there because he is good but um, you do need very high crit chance and crit damage to make him actually useful. Kaneki is gonna be like bottom B tier because um, uh, his ultimate, he's kinda like Katakuri but weaker and I'm not a huge fan of Katakuri, I definitely don't enjoy using Kaneki. Um, Megumin is gonna be like C tier because just really, really bad mobility, you get locked in place with our iframes, that's just really bad. Um, now Fumi um, is a support character and this character now exists as a support, so like um, this guy is literally useless. Genos, not bad. I'm gonna go and put him right there in B tier. He does not have insane mobility, which is why I cannot put him higher than Alterius Awakening. Uh, Todoroki is a pretty reasonable B tier. Uh, Vampire Toga is probably gonna be as well like low B tier. Tanjiro is gonna be a C tier definitely. I mean, he is not the best, but he does have, I think, a dash skill. Um, this uh, Winter Spirit Leo is also gonna be a B tier. Zenitsu is kinda trash, gonna be in C tier. Um, Emiya is actually a pretty reasonably good B tier. I'll go, I'll go and put him right there. Uh, better than Kanaki, definitely. Uh, Rimuru is also gonna be here just because he's a good assist because of the AoE. Asuna is also a pretty solid B tier because just a very good moveset. Same for Zoro. Uh, they, these three are just very good budget characters. All Might is also decently good, but um, yeah, I'll put him right there, like low B tier. Uh, I'll put him right here. Uh, then we have Rukia, who's gonna be in C tier. Akuma or Shinra is going to be like also in B tier because he has a dash skill and he's got a skill that makes him move fast, which is nice. Sukuna is going to be also in B tier, but he's not that OP, um, and these characters are just better on a budget. Um, Grey is just really, really trash. Um, Sasuke is definitely not the best. Akaza is is okay. His ultimate will reset your cooldowns. He's like Nezuko, but ultra weak compared to Nezuko. Asta is also gonna be right there. Um, Itadori is not bad actually. I'm gonna go and put him in C tier as well. Um, and Natsu is also fairly decent for that extremely cheap cost. Sakura is okay because you won't die at least. Killua is also just okay. C tier. Um, Goku is of course D tier. Uh, Ichigo is going to be like bottom C tier because Ichigo is like one of the best uh, uh, starters along with Naruto. Uh, Luffy is also going to be in D and Deku is also going to be in D. So that is pretty much it for... Uh, wait, no, that's not it. I, uh, what am I even saying? There's like a couple more characters we have. Uh, Lancer, who's going to be um, low B. This is the reason why I put Bakugo and stuff because Lancer is fast and you might as well use him if you just 
if all you want to be is fast. Um, the regular Yorichi is probably going to be like, um, now that there's no glitch, um, I would have to put him just in A tier because he's nothing special anymore. And that now we come to the end of this tier list. So thank you guys for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you guys for 3k subs once again. Let me know what other videos you want to see and I'll catch you guys in the next video. See you.